All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Aquarium Online Academy. Happy Monday morning. I hope you guys are having an awesome uh, Monday morning so far and kind of still waking up, so are we, um, in the studio here at the Aquarium of the Pacific with a couple of uh, my friends here. We have Emily over at the computer ready to take all of your text messages. If you do have any questions or comments, you're more than welcome to text those in at this number right below here. That number is 562 Two eight six one eight three eight. Uh, you can text in any comments you have, any questions. If you just want to share with us what your favorite animal is, that works too. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, you can go ahead and text us on in. And uh, if you're not watching this while we're live, so if it's not 9 a.m. on Monday morning, December 7th, 2020, then we prefer that you email us if you do have any questions. And that's this email right down here, live at lbaop.org org and we'll have an educator get back to you. Uh, I have my friend James over at the computer over here controlling all of these awesome things behind me because we are going to be talking about a really cool group of animals today. Does anyone think they know what it is? <gasps> I think we're going to be talking about baby animals. Some of my favorite animals here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. Uh, but let's go ahead and make some observations. Let's kind of start thinking. Let's get in our scientist mode here. Start thinking about, hmm, how do some animals change from when they're babies to adults? So actually right behind me, we have one of our largest exhibits here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. We have our tropical gallery. And this is about 350,000 gallons of water and well over a thousand individuals, ranging about, I don't know, a hundred different species. So, hold on, we're going to get that back up. It looked a little blurry there for a second, so we're going to try to reload that here. But I want you to think, hmm, well, how do babies change? Hmm, are all animals born the same way that they look when they grow up? So humans, we're born pretty similar, right? Would you agree with that? Yeah, we kind of pretty much look like just a mini adult, right? Hmm, but do all animals look like that? Do some animals change color? Do some animals change shape? Hmm, oh, another thing we're going to be thinking about is also parents. Yeah, I'm sure that we have someone who has taken care of us. Uh, whether it's a mom, dad, auntie, uncle, grandma, grandpa, someone's been taking care of us. So as humans, we have someone raise us. But that maybe isn't the case for all animals. So we're going to be talking about the differences and similarities a little bit between animals today. Alrighty, everyone. Well, we are going to start off with a really cool baby animal. And it's actually... Uh, an animal that we have uh, not the same species in this exhibit, but a uh, different one actually does the exact same thing. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, actually let's go ahead and put up the baby, the egg, Mr. James, because let's take a few guesses on what animal this is because it can be a little tricky. All right, I'm going to get out of the way, make some observations. What do you think this baby animal is? Hmm, it looks a little weird, right? Does this look like something you've ever seen before? Maybe not. Hmm, what in the world could this be? Oh, well, let's see. This, I kind of mentioned before, this is the egg. So the whole thing isn't the animal itself. But that little squiggle right here, where it goes from a big end to a little end, that is the animal. Has anyone ever seen something like this? Does it maybe look a little fishy? Hmm. All right, so we have a little bit of a fishy here and a big blob in the center. Now, believe it or not, this is a baby shark. It's a shark! Whoa! Yes, these are, this is a baby shark. The baby shark is that little squiggle. Oh, and they grow up to these wonderful sharks. 
that you might see here. So these are called bamboo sharks. They only get to around maybe about this big. So smaller than I am. I know you can't tell how, how big I am, but they are only about three-ish feet. So only about that big. So they're not very big sharks and that's when they're adults. So when they're babies, they're a lot tinier. So the egg itself, let's see, I have another shark egg. This shark egg in my hand, so you can see kind of the, the scale. This is a bigger shark egg than this one here. This is from a different kind of shark. It's called a zebra shark. But it's essentially the same thing. But if this was a bamboo shark like this one here, it would only be about that big. So they're really tiny when they come on out. And any idea what this middle thing is right here? Hmm, well, let's think. Have you ever helped someone in the kitchen, maybe an adult, maybe make breakfast or cookies? And maybe you cracked open an egg, a chicken egg, not a shark egg, I hope so. <laughs> and you crack open a chicken egg and there's that kind of uh, orange thing in the middle, the yolk. Mm-hmm. Well, shark eggs have yolks too. You can see it right there. And that's the shark gets all their nutrients from when they're growing up. So they, as the shark gets bigger, it's actually pretty cool because we can watch over time. It only takes a few months and we can watch over time. The shark gets bigger and the yolk, if they're kind of eating that yolk, do you think it gets bigger with them or smaller? You got it, it gets smaller. So the shark gets bigger, the yolk gets smaller. And then soon after a few months, just about three months, the shark can wiggle out of the egg casing and come out and be on its own. I think we might have a picture of a baby bamboo shark. So we'll try to bring that up for you here in a second. But it basically looks like a mini version of their mom or dad. It looks like a little tiny version of that shark and they come out just about this big. Now, these sharks are really cool because they have these bands on their backs that you might notice their coloration. Now, of course, different sharks have different coloration. Oh, here we go. Ah, oh, wonderful. This is our baby bamboo shark. And their stripes, do you see them there? Those can help them to blend in maybe with some rocks or the bottom. Because what do you notice? Is this shark swimming through the water like this? Or is it kind of resting on the bottom? It's resting on the bottom, exactly. So these sharks tend to spend a lot of time kind of resting on the bottom. It's actually really funny when they're babies, just like this, they use these fins right here that they normally use for swimming. But guess what? They do something really cool. They walk. A walking shark? Hold on a second. Miss Allie, that sounds ridiculous. No, I promise, they actually do walk. They take these little fins and they go like this, boop, 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 on the ground. It's really cool. And they use those fins to kind of move around. Uh, so they're not completely swimming, but they're still moving on the bottom. Now these baby sharks, they are so little that we feed them really tiny little shrimp when they're born. So we can pour little baby shrimp in their water and then they'll start to move around and get all of those little tiny shrimp. Now this is just one kind of shark. There's about 400 kinds of sharks in the world. Not all of them are born from eggs like this bamboo shark here. So some sharks lay eggs. Some sharks have what looks like live birth. They just the shark comes out already born. There's no egg hatching that we can see involved. But something that most sharks have in common is that there's no real parental care. So that means that when a shark has a baby or it lays an egg, it kind of says, all right, I hope you're safe and I'm gonna head on out, okay? Like you are on your own. So there's not a lot of parental care. They don't really raise their young like, like we do. Oh, so here's actually our shark lagoon habitat. So this is our shark lagoon right outside right now. I love it first thing in the morning. It's nice and beautiful. And this is live. So you can see our sharks are actually pretty active right now. And this is a zebra shark. Now this zebra shark right here, that 
big one, she does lay eggs. And that's actually this one right here. Remember how I mentioned this is from a bigger shark than the bamboo? Well, this right here is from a zebra shark. So the egg itself is right here. And then do you notice these kind of really sticky thingies here? Yeah. Well, when she lays her egg, she wants to make sure, I mean, she's not staying around for a very long time. She wants to make sure her egg is safe. So what she does, she kind of wraps these sticky kind of almost, um, almost like, like uh, hairs almost. She wraps them around this coral here. So it stays nice and safe. So it stays put. Sometimes you cannot even barely see the egg in the coral because it's so good at blending in. But again, other sharks are born alive, uh, just like you might, might kind of think about them just coming on out already looking like a shark. So it really does depend. Alrighty, well let's go ahead and move on to another baby animal. And you know what? I did have one animal planned, but looks like Olivia has texted in already. Again, you are all welcome to text on in if you do have any questions or anything you're wondering about. Our number is right below here. Text and rates do apply, so please do ask a grown-up. But Olivia was curious about baby otters. Now, I didn't have that one planned today, but Olivia, that's a really great idea. Let's talk about baby otters. All right, now, so here are two of, oh, I'm kidding, three of our otters. One came and snuck in the back there. Now, here at the Aquarium of the Pacific, we have five southern sea otters. So there's a lot of different kinds of otters, but we have a really cool kind here called the southern sea otter. And actually, here at the Aquarium of the Pacific, we have all females. So we actually don't have any males here. So we don't have any breeding uh, set up. And actually that's for a really good reason. Now this is a little complicated, but these animals, those, those sea otters that you see there, this kind of sea otter is what we call endangered. Has that word, have you ever heard that word before? Endangered. Hmm. That means that there's not a lot of them left. And we really need to protect them before we lose them all. So we don't breed them here, but we do have our facility ready to help otters that need it out in the wild. So right now we're actually working um, to have a new facility set up here at the Aquarium of the Pacific to help um, baby sea otters that don't have moms or dads, that don't have anyone to raise them. Well, sea otters are kind of like us. They need someone to raise us. They're not like sharks where their mom can have them and they are just uh, off on their own. Nope, they are kind of like us. They need someone to help take care of them. They need someone to teach them how to groom just like this. It's kind of like brushing your hair or brushing your teeth. You need someone to teach you those things. Well, uh, we actually are starting up a surrogacy program here. That means kind of like our otters can uh, be the mom of an adopted otter. How cool is that? So we can have baby otters from the ocean come here, learn how to be an otter from an adoptive mom here, and then all things go right and our otter, our otter teaches this baby otter all that they need to know, we can put them back in the ocean to help their populations. How cool is that? Now baby otters learn a lot from their moms. Uh, they learn how to groom. They learn how to eat. Oh, so here's one of our, our younger otters here. So they learn how to groom. Of course, they have really thick fur. So their fur is the densest fur out of any animal in the world. So that means that they really have to take care of their hair. Yeah, they are constantly worried about their hair. And they're always rubbing it, making sure it's nice and clean. And nothing is, um, you know, stuck in it or anything like that. So they learn that from their mom. But they also get their food preferences from their mom. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean that... An otter can have lots of different options of food. They could have 
uh, urchins, clams, snails, sea stars. Uh, they could even have uh, maybe and maybe an octopus. <laughs> they could have lots of different uh, food sources, but they get their preferences. So they get what they like from who raises them. So um, say that uh, a baby was raised eating a lot of clam. They're probably going to eat clam um, for the rest of their life. Uh, so hopefully our Circus Sea program will help help more baby otters out in the ocean but they are mammals just like us so of course their parents do raise them they drink milk from their mom so uh, just like when we're younger when we are first born we drink milk well so do otters they drink milk as well uh, so awesome pretty cool that we are setting up that program here for those little sea otters now, speaking of mammals, there's another mammal here that actually we have had a baby not too long ago. And this is one of my favorite animals. Oh, again, I gave you a hint. It's a mammal. Hmm. What's another sea mammal? Hmm. It might kind of look like an otter to you. It has hair on its body, but not quite as noticeable. And it kind of moves around like an inchworm on land. Any guesses what I'm talking about? <laughs> it's a seal. Let's go ahead and check out our seals. So here at the Aquarium of the Pacific, oh, we have a baby seal. This little one right here. Can everyone say hi, Kaya? That's her name. Her name is Kaya. She was born uh, in April of 2018. So she's just about two, two and a half years old. And look at how cute she is. Now this here is her mom. Her mom's name is Shelby. And her dad, who's somewhere in the pool out there, uh, her dad's name is Troy. Now these are seals. These are what we call harbor seals. And one really good way to tell that they're a seal and not a sea lion, easiest way for me, Let's look on the side of their head. Do you see behind Shelby's eyes? See that little hole? You might need to put on your, put on your magnifying glasses. Do you see a little tiny, 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 tiny hole? That little dot there? Those are her ears. Whereas sea lions have nice, big external ear flaps, almost like little puppy dog ears. Well, seals, they don't have that. They just have a tiny little hole. So of course her baby Kaya has that little tiny hole too. So Kaya was born here and they of course drink milk just like we talked about because they're mammals. They drink milk from their mothers and their milk is super fatty. They want to put on all that fat to stay nice and warm because Kaya she wasn't born with a whole bunch of blubber to stay warm so she wants to put that on put on that nice blubber layer to stay nice and warm. Now she drinks her mother's milk, but only for about four to five weeks. Now she, that, is that a long time? Not really. So she only is nursing for just about a month. Whereas us humans, we nurse a lot longer than that. Definitely more than a month before we start eating solid food. Well, after about a month, Kaya will be eating uh, lots of seafood, like fish, and maybe some squid. But they actually don't stay with their moms very, very, uh, very long compared to some other mammals. So once she is starting to eat on her own, mom says, all right, I love you and I will see you in a little bit. And you are on your own, little baby seal. And our baby seal swims on off. Now, actually, believe it or not, seals can swim when they're born. Isn't that cool? So she was born and already knew in her seal brain, oh, I know how to swim. Wouldn't that be cool? I wish I was born uh, learn, learning, already know how to swim, but seals can actually do that. So pretty, it's pretty awesome. And they're born, um, how big are they when they're born? They're born about maybe 25 pounds. So they're much bigger than us, but they're still pretty little. 
and they get big pretty quick because seals can get to around around 300 pounds so they can put on quite a bit of weight Alrighty, let's go ahead and check out another baby animal here at the aquarium now this one's not a mammal which means it doesn't it doesn't uh, have live birth it doesn't uh, drink milk this one doesn't even have hair hmm but it does breathe air Ooh, that's a good one all right let's see well this one i'm gonna give you a hint when they're adults they're black and white Ooh, who's black and white when they're adults hmm i'll give you another hint they have feathers all over their bodies and they have a really really kind of sharp beak hmm anyone have any guesses again if you would like to text us in please do at 562-286-1838 we'd love to hear from you all right let's go ahead and check out our next animal all right let's see if james knows what i'm talking about black white hmm feathers ah oh, this is it is this the picture you were expecting it's not the one i was expecting it's a very silly picture of our penguin here this is a penguin if we're just looking straight on into its face this is what we would see and i know it looks a little weird their mouth has little spikes in it mm -hmm. not just babies all penguins have these little spikes and that helps them to go 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 and swallow their food whole. All right, well, these penguins here, we at the Aquarium of the Pacific have Magellanic penguins. Now, there's around 17 species of penguins in the world, and this is just one of them. They're found off the coast of South America, and let's get a better view of their adult coloration. We're going to check out their black and white uh, bodies here in just a second. Now, their bellies are, which one? Black or white? What do you remember about penguins? Hmm. That's right, they're white. They have white bellies. And what about their back here? Yes, it's black. So this coloration here as an adult is camouflage to help avoid predators. So when they're swimming, they're swimming through the water. If a predator or prey for that matter, is on top of them looking down. That dark back blends in with the bottom of the ocean. Whereas if maybe a predator is looking up and the penguin's up here, then that light belly blends in with the sunlight coming in from above. But penguins are not actually born with this coloration. Any idea what they might look like? Do you think they're hot pink? No, probably not hot pink. But they do kind of look like this. Let's see. I know we have some baby penguin pictures uh, here in just a second. And they are about kind of the same color all the way all over. So not as contrasted back and front, but they're kind of one solid color. <gasps> oh, have you ever seen a baby penguin before? That's pretty cute look how fuzzy they are now this you can't quite tell as well from this coloration but they're kind of a charcoal uh, almost a grayish coloration and these babies are really poofy they're really really fluffy and poofy and they don't have their adult feathers yet now that means that these babies they don't know how to swim like the seals when they're born these babies don't know how to go just go into the water and start catching food. So what they do is they stay on land for a while and their parents take turns and they bring them food. Now their food um, comes from their mom's or dad's stomach, so it's a little weird. It's called regurgitation. Basically, the parents go into the water and eat a whole bunch of yummy seafood, bring it back out and go, bleh here you go, <laughs> into their baby's mouth. So their babies do get their food, but not exactly uh, how we might picture it. Uh, so the babies, they get big quick. Penguin babies, they get about the size of their parents within a couple months, within around three months. So imagine if you were a three-month-old baby 
and you were the size of your mom or dad. Whoa, <laughs> I mean, kind of crazy. But that's how it works for penguins. They need to get really big, really quick in order to survive. It's pretty tough out there to be a penguin and you wanna be nice and big. And of course, big is only about this big, but they still don't look like their parents, even though they're the same size. What do you notice about this coloration? Is this the same as the adult penguin we looked at before? What's different? Hmm. Well, they're not as poofy as they were when they were babies, but do you notice they're kind of grayish and they don't have the bands. So actually, let's go ahead and compare it to an adult again. And go ahead and look at the chest of the adult penguin. I want you to kind of compare it in your head to the chest of the baby penguin. What's different? Hmm, so they might be the same size, but what do you notice about their coloration? Wow, so this penguin here has a dark head, it has a band, kind of like a necklace, right across its neck. And then on his chest, it has another band. Those baby penguins we talked about before, they didn't have that. They're just a nice solid coloration, kind of maybe they have a little bit of difference, maybe a little darker in some spots, but they don't have this drastic coloration. And that helps other penguins know, oh, that's a baby, that's a baby. You know, we're gonna kind of look after that one a little bit more because they're just a baby. They're not sure exactly how to be a penguin yet. Then after about one year of looking like a baby penguin, having that nice kind of soft coloration, uh, kind of gray, then guess what? All their feathers fall out boop, and they look like a little bald chicken. They look like a naked chicken and they kind of sting on land for a few weeks and they get a whole new set of feathers that look like this. So after about one year, then they turn completely into looking like an adult. So that their feathers come in and they have this black and white coloration. And their feet, um, their feet might change colors a little bit as, as they age, uh, but their coloration and all these little dots and freckles, those will stay the same throughout their whole life from then on, from then on out. Uh, so it's pretty interesting that their coloration changes even, even when they're, they're the same size as their parents. Then their parents from then on off, um, they don't really take care of their babies. They say, oh, you are great. You can go into the water and you can get your own food. Now, what do penguins eat? Hmm, that's right. They eat seafood, they love fish. So they can go into the water and eat their fish. And then maybe in a few years, who knows? Maybe they'll have their own babies because penguins after a few years, then they can start uh, kind of getting a mate and having some babies. They don't have to wait as long as some other animals, maybe like humans. Oh, let's see, Olivia, hi Olivia, also noticed that one of the penguins was rounder than the other two. Um, can we tell the difference? Oh, how can we tell the difference between, say, two penguins? That's a really great question. So it's a little hard if you don't see them every single day, but this is our, our penguin webcam. So this is our penguin exhibit right now here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. And if I were to ask you, can you tell these penguins apart? Probably not from here. It's a little hard, <laughs> but if you work with them a lot, you start to notice little tiny things that are different. Of course, from here, it's a little hard, but if they're standing right in front of you, remember those little polka dots we saw on the adult penguin? Well, those polka dots, those little freckles, are really unique to each individual penguin, just like maybe uh, you have a birthmark or freckles on your body. It's kind of similar to that. So they, we can tell them apart by that. 
Um, some of them, you're right, are a little rounder or a little smaller or a little larger than others. Just like people, penguins come in all different shapes and sizes. So that's another really great way to tell them apart. Uh, but their faces might look a little different. And uh, just to make sure we know which penguin is which, they wear some very fashionable jewelry. They wear bracelets on their wings or that they use as flippers. So, oh, you can kind of see here, one of our penguins got out of the water. Do you see that little thing on their, on their flipper right there? Almost looks like a little tiny white band. Yeah, it's a little band that has beads on it of a certain color. So they have a certain color beads. It's kind of like an ID tag. So if we weren't sh completely sure that that penguin was that penguin, we could just check their colors on their bands just to make sure. So when you're here at the Aquarium of the Pacific next time, uh, maybe you can go on up to our penguin exhibit and we have a whole list of all of the penguin colors. And you can try to see if you can find each penguin by looking at their, uh, at their flippers or their wings in the water. All right, everyone. Well, I had so much fun hanging out with you and talking about baby animals today. We talked about some really cute animals. I love that we even talked about otters. Thank you, Olivia, for bringing otters up and bamboo sharks and seals and penguins. But we do have to start wrapping up. So uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Now, in about a half an hour at 10 o'clock, we will be talking about food webs. Ooh, so if you want to tune in for that, we'd love to have you. But other than that, have a great rest of your Monday, and we'll hope to see you again soon. Bye.